Yeah. Jonathan Turley's been on TV for days. He's back with us today to talk <laughs> strategy. How are you doing, sir? Good morning to you. Share a few things with Thank our you. viewers. New York Post, uh, a rain on his parade. Pretty clever. Rappy birthday. Trump arrested day before turning 77. Today is his birthday. You've made the point consistently. Trump's got to run the table, all 37 charges. But in that indictment, there are conversations that apparently they had interviews with Trump's attorneys. Now, as a man of law, when it comes to attorney-client privilege, what's to prevent a judge from taking this whole case and just tossing it out? Would you see that as possible or not? Well, it is possible. Uh, the the extent to which they relied upon President Trump's former counsel to incriminate him uh, was really quite astonishing. You know, the, what the prosecutors did is they argued that there was a crime fraud exception here, that the attorney was involved in a crime, and therefore they could ask him about what would be confidential communications. But when you read this uh, indictment, it's pretty shocking uh, the degree to which they're quoting his own counsel in order to make the case against him. That's going to be an appellate issue. And I think that even with all the other troubling aspects of the indictment, and there are troubling aspects, the photos, the audio tapes, all that is troubling. But so is the use of these statements uh, mm -hmm. from the attorneys. The court's going to have to review that. And I do have serious concerns about it. Jonathan, you wrote recently, uh, and I think believe it's in USA Today, so it's time to crunch the numbers, and there's the numbers 90, 70, 12, and 1. What do those mean? That's just to help you both out with this week's lottery numbers. <laughs> uh, the uh, 90 is actually the rough period before an election that the DOJ begins to shut things down. They have a policy not to take actions that could influence election. The first election, the primary, is in February. So that would put a trial in November or earlier. Uh, that's going to be very hard to do. 70 is the period for a speedy trial. But even though the prosecutors want a speedy trial uh, in 70 days, that's their, that is a protection for the defendant, not for the prosecutors. And they would be legally insane not to waive the speedy trial uh, uh, protection. Uh, that's going to make this even more difficult because they're going to push it further out towards that 90-day line. The 12 is that you've got to come up with 12 jurors that are going to be unbiased. Polls show that about half of the uh, half of Americans believe this is a politically motivated case. That's going to be your pool. And then finally, one is the most important number of all. Trump has to run the tables. He can't leave a count there. If he loses a single count, He's looking at anywhere between a maximum of 10 and 20 years. Now, we can debate whether that's likely or not, but that's a sizable chunk of time for someone who's turning 77 today. But there's another problem for the prosecutors. Just as Trump can't lose one count, Jack Smith can't lose one juror. And this is a case where you could have uh, a hung jury, mm. and it may be increasingly difficult to bring another case. Well, wow. in the meantime, you wrote a piece this week for The Messenger about Robert Hur. Who's Robert Hur? He's the one investigating President Joe Biden. In 30 seconds, why so quiet, Professor? Well, Bill, the fact that you have to ask who's Robert Hur explains the problem. Uh, he, very few people know him except as the other special counsel. He is supposedly investigating Joe Biden. We have not heard anything, not a grand jury, not witnesses being subpoenaed coming out of that investigation. The concern I have is that what the president has said makes no sense in no universe does his inadvertence claim hold together? Because these documents were removed from the White House, then divided and moved repeatedly. That shows something other than inadvertence. That shows intent by someone. So the question is, has her asked for an interview with Biden? Has he gotten a statement from Biden? That was what they did in the Trump investigations with people like Michael Flynn. They quickly got statements that could be used against them if they were lying or misrepresenting. We have not heard anything along those lines. Yeah, interesting. Uh, something a lot of people are not talking about. It. Thanks for writing about it. Nice to see you today, Professor. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.